Welcome painters, today I have a cool video because I'm going to paint this miniature. In this video I'm going to explain how to paint the armor and the OSL effect. The level is advanced, but don't worry because the process is very easy. This video is sponsored by Loot Studio Company. In the description below you have a link. a look because the miniature are awesome so guys if you are ready let's go for it First off, prime the miniature. Here's a link to a video where I explain which colors to use to prime them. Now I will paint the base color. I do a mix of heavy gold brown and dark sea blue. I want to get a cold armor with a bluish tone so this color is perfect. I put the mixture inside this old blister. Add some water and mix well. I will use the Infinity CR Plus with a 0.15 millimeter needle and the pressure is at 1.8 bar. I test it out, I've got a perfect dilution. What's next? To apply thin layers. Look in the box at how I press the trigger and apply thin layers. In no hurry. I cover it little by little. The more layers you add to the same part, the more intense the color becomes. We have to cover the whole armor. Here you can see the final result. Step number two, what's next? Highlighting. I add a bit of heavy gold brown and some drops of water to the previous mixture and blend it very well. Adding thinner is also important if you notice the airbrush keeps getting clogged since the game color extra opaque range is very thick. Write down that trick to use thinner with game color extra opaque paints if it clogs the airbrush a lot. I will apply the first highlight. Pay close attention in the box to how I press the trigger, very softly. And I apply the first highlights. I focus on the upper plates. I apply thin layers. I apply a thin layer, let it dry, and then repeat. This way the color becomes more intense and I can graduate the highlights on the upper crown as well. Short and precise movements. Notice I get very close to the figure so I can be more accurate. On the feet the same, soft touches to mark the highlights. On the knee pads, which there are some skulls, I apply the first highlight as well. I come back to the plates to mark them more. As I said, the more layers you add to the same part, the more intense the color becomes. The shoulders the same. 
I highlight the upper part. Everything is very smooth. And you can already see this armor is going to have cold tones, since he is a zombie king. And here you can see the final result of the second step. Step number three, I will continue highlighting the armor. As you can see, I will use Italian Tank Crew Highlight from the Panzer Aces range. This color is perfect to highlight desaturated colors. Why? Because its composition includes white and green. If we add yellow, we would get shiny armor and I don't want that. I want a desaturated and cold armor, so this color is perfect. All right, so I check the dilution is perfect and add the highlights. Pay attention to the square, how I press the trigger very gently down and back, and to the finger position. That's the secret. I add soft touches to apply the second highlights. Let's go, the other leg plate's the same, focusing on the upper surfaces. I press very softly. As you can see, the second highlight is already noticeable. By pressing the trigger like this, you will be more accurate. Little by little, don't rush. I also want to tell you that Volume 1 4th Edition is available on my website. 3rd Edition was sold out, so I reprinted it about three weeks ago. So, if you are interested in Volume 1, you can get it on my website. Well, let's keep highlighting. Notice the process is very simple. You just have to follow the steps. Going slowly is very important. I will highlight the legs a bit. At the top, two. On the crown, the spikes, two. On the upper parts of the shoulders, Notice that there is already a contrast between the light and shadows. And here you can see the final result of the third step. Step number four, I will continue highlighting. I will mix white with the Italian Tank Crew highlight from the Panzer Aces range. What I want to do is to add some points of light to make the armor shine a bit more. For those of you who are new to the channel and have some questions about paint dilution or using the airbrush, here's a link to a video about it. It is super useful and will help you a lot with the handling of the airbrush. Well, perfect dilution, and now I will apply points of light 
Notice I apply them at key points. On the shoulder pads, look in the box. Very soft and precise touches. That way, I will make these parts more eye-catching. If you apply too many points of light, the effect will be spoiled. It has to be applied only on certain key parts to draw the attention of the viewer. Well, I also add a soft little point on the upper plate of the leg. I also take this opportunity to paint the sword with this mixture. It's the best thing about using an airbrush, getting perfect blending. As you can see, the blade was gray, and I highlight it with this mixture. And the result is noticeable. Soft layers. And you will achieve a perfect result. To speed up the recording process, I painted the base colors of all the other parts off camera. I used pale flesh with a bit of reference 331 for the face. The coat is black with a bit of dark red and the same for the fabrics. So I get the color scheme, well, kind of like a sketch of the color scheme. Next, I will apply a wash to the armor to add definition. I will use turquoise and sepia ink. I also add some water to the mixture to make it thinner. And I apply it to the armor to fill in all of the crevices and add definition. The intensity of the yellow will be reduced by this wash. I want a colder armor and I will achieve it with this wash. It's very important to apply a wash, let it dry, and then repeat. If you apply too many washes at the same time, you won't achieve the expected result. Write it down. Apply a wash, let it dry. You can speed up the process with a hair dryer, or just wait until it dries. Note, sepia ink is a bit satin, which is perfect when painting armor. to get that satin tone. It also helps to distinguish it from the fabrics. Fabrics must be matte and the armor a bit satin. Well, here you can see the final result of this step. Step number six. I will put heavy gold brown, yellow green, and Italian tank crew highlight from the Panzer Aces range and turquoise on the wet palette. Since in this step, I am going to define all the armor by brush. I will make all of the mixtures on the palette. I will add a bit of heavy gold brown to turquoise, then yellow green, and finally Italian tank crew highlight. Then I have all of the mixtures all ready on the palette. And I find it much easier to paint. Well, let's start with the edges to add definition to the armor. As you can see, I outline with little dots and lines. This way I get an ancient armor, a weathered one. because this mini is a vampire zombie king after all. And the armor is cool that way with a little wear. And this way, with little points and lines, we will achieve this effect. 
An easy process, just do it slowly. Painting with the side of the brush will make the outlining process much easier. It is a time-consuming step, but critical. I also told you this video is advanced level and implies more painting time. If you want to paint an army, reduce the number of steps. Here I want to show you how to paint a miniature at a high level. Notice I tilt the figure and use the side of the brush to make outlining easier. Since I have all of the mixtures on the palette, I am faster. It's not necessary to stop and make a new mixture, since I have all of them prepared. That's one of the pros of a wet palette, since the colors remain fresh all the time. Well, I outline the plates of the leg. And notice that now I'm applying a kind of stippling. This is how I do the wear. If I realize I added too strong a point, too strong a brush stroke, I clean the brush and then blend it. In the previous step, we reduced the intensity with a wash. Now it's time to enhance the extreme highlights. Enjoy painting. If I overdo a wash, no big deal. I correct it in the next step and highlight it. You see that little by little, you can already see the definition on the plates. But there's much more work left. Let's go little by little. I also want to tell you that any questions you have, you can comment below. I try to read and answer them all. Notice this plate is more defined than the other leg. The weathering is noticeable. I just do little lines and dots. The plates of the leg the same. We will highlight the belt, which has a skull. Pay close attention to the movement of the brush. I apply very thin layers and highlight little by little, increasing the contrast.
Good contrast and definition is very important when painting NMM. If we don't outline the plates, we won't get a feeling of hardness, so always outline. I keep painting. As you can see, I highlighted the edges a bit more, and now I will add some points of light and definition. As I told you, this video is advanced level. Some of you may find it difficult, but don't worry. This channel is for learning. And I think that if you follow the steps, you will improve. I am adding the final touches. Define everything very well. I am adding more pale flesh to give some additional sparkle to the armor. I add more definition to the crown on the spikes. I am using more pale flesh. I also take the opportunity to paint the sword. Look carefully, it is super easy. I tilt the brush, outline the edges, super easy. Look, pim, 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 pim. The edges of the center the same. Use the side of the brush and it's done. As you can see, it's super easy to paint. This one, the same. We paint the bottom, then we will add a few washes to increase the contrast on the sword later. Notice that painting the blade edges is super easy. And here you can see the final result. Let's move on to the next. Step number seven, what time is it? To shade and add tones to the armor. I will use these colors, black periscopes, German red taillight from the Panzer Aces range. I put all of the colors on the wet palette. Violet as well. As you can see, they are cold colors since I want to keep the armor in that ambiance. You may ask yourself, hey, that red is a warm color. No, notice that this red is a cold one since it contains a lot of blue. Well, so easy. I will apply glazes to add shading and tones. Those of you who are new to the channel may be asking, what's a glaze? So here's a link to a video about how to make and apply them. If you're new to the channel, I recommend you watch it. I will apply glazes to add the tones. 
I play with red, violet, turquoise. Notice that I get a verdigris effect with only one layer. It fits perfectly and helps enrich the armor. This part is the most fun, since the more tones we add, the better. Don't forget shading. Some parts need more shadows. For example, here on the spikes, we will shade the side to increase the contrast. We play with tones and shadows. Observe how I shade the spikes on the knee pads. And to glaze, pay close attention. I apply the color and then I move it. This way I blend it and change the tone of the plate. Don't apply too dark or strong a glaze in areas of light because you will lose that intensity. But if you do, don't worry. Let it dry and then re-highlight it. As you're using a wet palette, the colors remain fresh, so don't worry about it. Then with black, I am defining some spikes a bit more to get more definition. I printed this mini with an Elegoo Mars printer. In the previous video, you can learn how to print your own figures. Here's a link to that video, which I recommend you watch. Having a 3D printer is amazing. A lot of companies are sending me the STL files to print their minis, and I print and paint them. A super fast process. I don't have to wait to receive it from a courier company. They send me the file, I print it, and done. Observe how I apply turquoise to the shoulder pad. What a cool color. I glaze to tone it. I add more turquoise to the bracelets. I want to differentiate the armor from these bracelets. I want to change the tone. I shade a bit here with violet to darken it. I want this part to be a tad darker, since in the next steps I will paint the flame in the hand. with an OSL effect. I keep painting because I'm babbling too much. And you can already see how it is changing by applying these tones and shades. From my point of view, this mini is spectacular, and you can paint it in a huge range of different color schemes. Right now I'm thinking of painting the armor red, so dark and whatnot. There are infinite options with this mini. If you have it and have an Instagram profile too, tag me because I like seeing what colors you use to paint it. I add more definition, I add a bit more black. And I also shade the sword. As you can see, painting the blade was super easy, first with the airbrush, taking advantage of the last highlight color from the armor. Then with the brush, I outline the edges, and now I shade it, super easy. I apply a wash to the face as well.
To add definition, I play with violet, red, and also turquoise. And here you can see the final result of this step. Now I will paint the face. I will use red ink, sepia ink. I put all of the colors on the wet palette by Redgrass Games. What colors am I missing the most of here? Pale Flesh and Italian Tank Crew Highlight. You may be thinking, why am I using so much of this color? Because it's one of my favorite colors, and also violet. I put all of the colors on the wet palette. I will apply a wash. I mix red ink and sepia ink. I will wash the whole face. Notice that I take a little bit, rest it, and drag it. Loading too much paint is not necessary. We do it little by little. We take a bit, rest it on the surface, and drag it. That's how to apply a glaze or a wash. Letting the wash dry is crucial. I use the hair dryer. You may be wondering, hot or cold air? I use it warm. You can also use it hot. I mean, if you're painting a plastic or resin miniature, be careful. Because the miniature could melt. This one is printed, so no worries. Well, I suppose that if it's too hot or cold, it could get ruined, but I don't use hot or cold. Warm. Well, I'm talking too much. I add a turquoise wash. And I will apply the first highlights. As you can see, Pale Flesh and Italian Tank Crew Highlight. I will also make a darker mixture of violet and red ink. And I combine them. For the more highlighted parts, I use Pale Flesh and Italian Tank Crew Highlight. And for the darker areas, I add violet, red ink, and sepia ink. Some time ago, I recorded a video about painting Mephiston's face. An amazing video. If you didn't see it, here's a link to it. I encourage you to watch it, since you'll see the whole process of painting a face. Well, I continue highlighting, adding definition, leaving this dark tone. I add this highlight to achieve definition. The brush I'm using is an Artist Opus size 00. It is perfect for painting well-detailed faces, like this vampire zombie with such an ugly, scarred face. We are almost done. As you can see, the video is super long. But it's worth it because I am showing you a lot of useful tips. Here you can see the final result. Ninth step. To speed up the process, I painted both the hair and cape off camera. As you can see, the coat is desaturated. I mixed red and black, and then I highlighted with the 331 color. I also added turquoise. Well, 
Any questions you may have about painting the cape or hair, comment below. And now I will paint the flame of the hand. I will use fluorescent green from the model color range. You have a lot of questions about using these colors and I will answer them all. I put a bit of fluorescent green in this old blister and add thinner. That's crucial. I will use the airbrush and I recommend adding thinner to thin down the paint. Using a light base color is also very important when using this color so you can achieve good results. As you can see, the flame is painted in a pale color, and now I will apply thin layers. Pay close attention in the box, how I press and paint. Fluoro colors are satin. It's what makes these colors different, so always apply it over a light colored base. And apply it like a wash, as a glaze, or with an airbrush. It's impossible to paint with a brush, for example, if you want to paint armor with a fluoro color, since the color must be applied as a glaze or with an airbrush. Write this down. I will record a video talking about how to apply fluorescent colors, but now I will continue explaining how to paint this mini. As you can see, I am applying thin layers and the green tone is starting to become noticeable. I also paint the bracelet, the shoulder pad, to create an OSL effect. I add some more layers. As I'm using the airbrush, the OSL effect is very fast. Applying it by brush is more difficult and will take much more time, but by airbrush, it's that fast, just a couple of minutes. Notice how I am applying the color to the shoulder pad. It looks so cool. Just a few little layers, and important, don't rush. If you press the trigger too much, you're going to make a mess, so go slowly. I say again, this color is satin, so apply a few layers, let it dry, and then repeat. Because satin colors don't cover like others, write that down. Apply the color, let it dry, and repeat. Now I will put fluorescent green, yellow green, and white on the wet palette because I will add some lights and shadows with the brush. I almost forgot to add turquoise. I make all the mixtures on the wet palette. I will apply a couple of strong highlights inside the skull, on the mouth too, to increase the contrast. and then I shade it. This video is very complete. I am showing you how to paint desaturated armor, how to apply OSL, to apply tones, a lot of things. The face, it's a complete video. That's why it's very long. Look at the skull, also the OSL effect. Now I will shade it. I use fluorescent green with a bit of turquoise. I'm looking for high contrast.
Just where the fingers meet the flames, I apply this wash in the shadow. The video is about to finish, just the magical touches left. So, I keep shading inside the flame, but not too much. Since it must be white in the middle. And here you can see the final result. Just the final step left. Step number 10, Magical Touches. I will use green-blue to enrich the armor. I will be making something like a verdigris to add another tone to the texture. That is so cool. This is advanced level, and it takes time. I repeat again, if you are gamers, don't follow all of the steps, reduce the process. If not, painting an army will take you a year or more. So this video is for people who want to improve, spending more time. I recommend you use this video for special characters. It's interesting painting your special figures at a higher level. I repeat, let me know any questions in the comments. And if you liked the video, share it. It will help me a lot to continue recording videos. So if you can do me the favor of sharing it, I would really appreciate it. Well, final touches. And do not add too much verdigris. Just a couple of touches and it will look great. And here you can see the final result. I hope you liked it very much. If you like the video, send it with your friends. And now I will be a Raffin. To participate, subscribe my channel, leave a comment and like the video. I will announce the winner next Friday. So I paint a lot and see you next video.